In this video, we're going to use this Diacatlia Chantilly Lace Twinkle as the subject for a discussion on Fusarium, what you need to look out for when it comes to signs and symptoms of Fusarium even before unpotting your orchid and cutting into the rhizome. After going through the signs and symptoms, I will unpot my Chantilly Lace and cut into the rhizome to see if the final symptom of all time, the purple ring or the purple cell damage is visible, which is the most important of all confirmations when it comes to assessing if an orchid it is infected with fusarium or not. Never a nice topic to have to deal with, especially because it's pretty much determines the orchid is considered terminal. But for a channel like mine, I'm happy to say that I'm glad that this orchid can serve a purpose in helping you, should you have something similar, odd, and not normal happening to any of your orchids in your collection at present or in the future. Fusarium wilt, the common reference to a fungus that has many variants. The most common ones present in orchids reported to cause foliar and root disease include Fusarium oxysporum, proliferatum, solani, subglutinans, and fractilexum. It also is common to find more than one species occurring within the same orchid, causing similar disease symptoms. So what are the most common and evident symptoms of Fusarium possibly having infected orchids? Let me tell you that in many cases, it is important to know the history of your orchid in order to come to the conclusion that Fusarium is the cause of the demise as opposed to bad culture, you, for example, making a mistake with your setup, or even more recent, let's say, you getting an orchid in a new order and seeing any of the symptoms I'm going to point out. As there are several individual symptoms, if only a single one of those are happening on your orchid, it does not straight away mean that your orchid has fusarium. However, as we go through the list of symptoms and more and more of them apply and tick the box, then it is pretty certain the orchid is infected. But not always. It could be a bacterial infection that settles in the rhizome and with that similar symptom, symptoms will show up and that is why knowing the history is important. So symptom number one, orchids with fusarium will show yellow, thin, wrinkled and shriveled leaves and they will eventually dry and fall off. It can take a matter of weeks or as in my case, years. Symptom number two, the pseudobulbs in sympodial orchids will shrivel even if they are not yet on the shrivel schedule because the type of orchid does not have pseudobulbs decline so rapidly and at the same time. But if they start to shrivel all at the same time, yeah, that is reason for concern. On monopodial orchids like Phalaenopsis, slipper orchids and vandas, for example, roots begin to rot and the base of the plant develops a black dry rot. Sunken spots on the leaves enlarge and form yellow streaks. Older leaves become leathery and younger leaves may become reddish. The flower stalk can develop a sunken, rotten spots with premature bud drop. My zygonesia maybe, but I digress. Symptom number three, new root tips turn black or brown without any fault of the culture or the setup. Knowing that there is no salt buildup on the surface of the media can give a better diagnosis because your root tips will burn and look the same if there's too much residual dry salts on the surface of your pot due to a too high concentration of fertilizer. Symptom number four, the orchid is always loose in the pot, never really roots in well because the roots in the pot are not able to absorb water and nutrients because the fusarium has done the deed and caused them to rot. Shameless plug here on my part, if you're finding that this video is helping you or will help you be able to diagnose your orchids without having to disturb them by unpotting and cutting into the rhizome, I would appreciate it very much if you would give me a thumbs up, as well as if you came to this video as a first time visitor to my channel and are not subscribed yet, I would appreciate your vote of confidence and hope to have earned your subscription to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. The support is greatly appreciated. So what does it take for this to happen, for Fusarium to come into an orchid? And what can we do to avoid ever getting Fusarium infections in our orchids? First of all, it is possible your orchid already came with Fusarium and was doing just fine before the Fusarium could take hold because the orchid was strong enough to grow without being bothered by the fungus. So you won't know you have a Fusarium infected orchid unless some stresses come into the equation and then the orchid weakens, giving the fusarium the break that it needs for it to start to spread. Stresses for the activation of fusarium include shipping, 
transport stress, acclimating time, wrong culture, which includes the wrong setup, not enough fertilizer, not enough light or water, as well as repotting, sharing water from one orchid to another, not knowing that one orchid has fusarium, seeing as it is without symptoms, but another orchid without fusarium in a weaker state or not as strong genetically gets that water and it will develop the symptoms we talked about before and boom. Your orchid can be fine in your collection, but any of these stressors can trigger fusarium in an orchid that was once a healthy specimen while the fusarium was present but not active. In addition to that, working with tools that are not sterilized or disinfected when repotting, cutting off the structures, cleaning root system, changing media, etc. The cross-contamination risk is high when the process of repotting and reusing unsterilized tools and pots is not 100%. As fusarium is such a detriment to the health of the orchid and pretty much closes the chapter of that orchid in your collection, attempts to revive the orchid and have it grow out of its fusarium infected structures and grow healthy again are admirable and should be taken into consideration if your orchid has any chance of parts of it having absolutely no purple discoloration in the rhizome. This is an advantage with some podial orchids that we have as opposed to monopodial orchids that are pretty much much doomed. However, when treating that supposed clean division with all the top systemic fungi on the market that you can legally acquire in your country, it is not a guarantee that the supposed clean division will survive and then be a healthy orchid again in 5 to 10 years. Usually, it is highly recommended to discard the orchid entirely and cut the losses, avoiding the risk of accidental cross-contamination to the rest of the collection. And after handling the infected orchid, everything needs to be sterilized again, maybe twice for peace of mind, before even thinking of approaching another orchid with the same tools or the equipment, catch trays, etc. You can use isopropyl alcohol to sterilize your tools, but know that the sterilization process happens as the alcohol evaporates, not while your tools are wet. You can also use a bleach and water solution. I go with 50-50 ratio and soak the tools in the solution, as well as I wipe down any surface area where I was handling my orchid using the same bleach solution. But you can also use a flame to sterilize your tools by heating the cutting surfaces to red hot. I have never done that because I would still need to sterilize all my surfaces and for me that is just too cumbersome. There are also many other products on the market that will ensure safe sterilization of your tools and surfaces. As I recycle my media, I sterilize the batch of media this orchid was potted up in with a 50-50 solution of water and bleach. Then, in fresh RO water, I boil my media for at least 30 minutes on a rolling boil before sorting it and storing it. As I mentioned, knowing the history of your orchid is paramount to be able to determine what is going on and being able to assess and determine the symptoms, here is the history of mine. This Dia Catlia Chantilly Lace Twinkle has been in my collection since 2018 and she arrived in an order which had one orchid that had fusarium right out of the gate. The question remains, and it is one that I cannot answer, but the question remains, was my Chantilly Lace Twinkle infected because it was packed in with an infected orchid or did my Chantilly Lace Twinkle already have fusarium in its own right, but it has taken this long for me to feel as though there is nothing left for me to do but toss it? I won't know the answer to that question, and it really doesn't matter anymore. Methinks that I've done everything I could to help this orchid grow out of its fusarium, but 2023 has proven that it is time for me to accept the inevitable. So, let's get this done. Let's dissect and inspect the orchid before I toss her. And even even if there is no purple ring in the rhizome, something else is very wrong with this orchid and after five years, it's time to make that call and say goodbye, but not before we do everything and have a look-see as to what is going on. Unpotting her is not going to be that difficult because root rot, one of the symptoms, loosen the pot, ticks the boxes. This is five years. She was doing quite okay in 2022 and I was hopeful, but this has not been the case in 2023. So let me just pick off the lacquer and then we're going to cut into the rhizome. And usually Fusarium is a little bit more, let's say, active from the back and it moves its way to the front. So we'll start with the back. I call that inconclusive. 
<laughs> we'll take another one. There we go. Hola. Very, very clear. Now, if you were doing this in order to save your orchid, what you would need to do is sterilize your cutting tool again prior to the next cut so that you're not spreading the disease into the rhizome if you're looking for a clean cut in order to save a division. Seeing as I've already made up my mind that this is not going to happen, she is not staying in my collection, I'm just gonna keep chopping away and show you bit by bit whether things progress or get worse. It's pretty much the same all through the back end. Yes, it is possible to save a sympodial orchid with Fusarium if the front lead is clean with only one pseudobulb. The question is, do you want to do that? Do you want to invest the time? I'm not prepared to do that even though I really have always wanted Chantilly Lace Twinkle in my collection. So let's just say, hypothetically, I wanted to save this front lead and hopefully encourage root growth. I should not have used my secateurs without sterilizing them first in order to get into the rhizome, which kinda looks okay. This bit right here is the front lead. It looks clean, however, the roots being like this is because the spores of the fusarium are also in the media and on the ferns. They're everywhere. So this is super duper classic close-up example of what happens to root tips when you have a fusarium infected orchid. This root tip is not even dry. I can't just break it off like these other ones. It just goes black. So once my hands have dried, I'm gonna show you my Francis Fox. We haven't seen her in a long time. Francis Fox are usually, well, they are reputed to all have Fusarium in them, no matter where you get them from in the world. But I've been working with mine because she has shown me positive signs. So I'm gonna let my hands dry and we'll check out the Francis Fox. All right, my Francis Fox is still in the collection. We are working with a Fusarium infected orchid that is showing signs of trying to make it. And the new growths are looking so much better than what we've seen in the previous example with the Chantilly Lace Twinkle. So these are the two new growths of 2023. I know, right? Two new growths in the same calendar year. Pretty amazing considering that she is infected with Fusarium, but I'm working with her seeing as there are positive signs. And you can see how she has absorbed the back bulbs. And this division was clean when I cut the rhizome. So what we're looking at now is her trying to use her back structures in order to save herself. And I have to say, even though I haven't had any blooms from her in two years, I don't care, don't mind. This is not important at this stage of her recovery. I do have a sheath in there. I hope it doesn't want to bloom because the eye that is swelling at the base is of more interest to me. And you can see how there are, you know, already drying up roots happening. But this Francis Fox is a much stronger orchid than my Chantilly Lace Twinkle ever was upon arrival. So I'm not concerned about those roots drying out. I do have roots in the pot, otherwise we wouldn't have two very nice chubby pseudobulbs. I am not concerned about the shriveling back bulbs there. That is a normal trait. That is nothing to be worried about and has nothing to do with the fact that roots could be rotting in the pot. If I were to lift her, she is pot bound. That is a good sign. So an orchid that is confirmed to have Fusarium can be recovered and I wasn't exaggerating when I said it can take five to 10 years. We are now two years into the process doesn't mean she is rescued completely because any form of stress can trigger the fusarium to activate once more and then take over. So this orchid is being very, very protected in my collection and I'm pumping calcium into her and making sure that she has the highest light for my winter conditions and eventually, maybe, because I don't want to have all this in the back here, I may in 2024 go in and cut into the rhizome one more time. It will all depend how she responds after the winter 
when she starts growing that eye. So it's a watch and observe, watch and observe, and be ready to accept the inevitable. It is possible that even after all these years of trying to rescue an orchid that was doing so well, appearing to be growing out of the disease, if it then collapses, you did your best. That's all I can say. So again, subscribe to the channel, follow the progress or the lack thereof of my Francis Fox and any other orchids that I have in the collection because <laughs> there's plenty to see. Thank you if you've watched to the end. I appreciate your time. Ask any questions you may have in the comments or just say hi. I love, love hearing from you. Until then, I do wish you a beautiful day, but I attach a condition to that, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.